All right, hi everybody. My name is Zach Day, one of the product managers for the Distal Extremities team. And today I'm gonna do a quick overview of the new Arthrex arthroscopy instrument system. This is a very comprehensive set. And as I pop the lid, you'll see that everything is broken into tiers. So this top level of instruments are all the joint preparation instruments. And when you pick this first level up, you have uh, a vast array of graspers, biters, punches, scissors, and uh, rongeurs as well. And then you have a, a few various instruments specializing for uh, your microfracture. And we've got the syndesmotic probe in here as well and a little biologics delivery tube. So um, the set also does house the current second generation GPS targeting system. But since that is a, not a new set, I'm not gonna actually highlight the function of this set, uh, just see that it does fit. And if you don't want to stack the system in there, you have an auxiliary bin to stack various instruments that that surgeon might want to use uh, during arthroscopy procedures. With this top layer of instrumentation, like I said, this is all basically joint prep instrumentation, and every instrument is color coordinated. So all of your chondral picks are black handled, your osteotomes are red handled, all of the various different curettes have a blue handle, uh, your ring curettes have this silver handle, and then the various elevators that we have are in gold. And the thing I want to highlight uh, first off are these microfracture picks because we have a new specialized way of uh, impacting the chondral picks so as the instrument doesn't skive. So I'm going to show you guys how to put that together. So we have first this 30 degree chondral pick. The surgeon, if they, if they want to, they can impact the back of this chondral pick with the mallet. But as we've seen historically with an instrument like this, since the the chondral pick is at a 30 degree angle. When you, when you hit this mallet, it tends to skive forward and not into the bone. So we've created a specialized instrument that's in the top tray right here. We have a new strike plate that attaches to the chondral pick. And so I'm gonna show you quickly how to build that. So here's your strike plate. And this is a little thread in feature. And you'll actually thread this into the strike plate first. Once that's threaded in, you take the little nub here, if you will, that you can see this little raised portion, and there's also a hole in this strike plate right there, and that will mate into it. So you push it in with your thumb, and then I push the strike plate down, and you can hear that tactile clip. And so now this is engaged and loaded to where if the surgeon wants to mallet here, they can, but you can imagine that when we're malleting in line in this line, which is in line with the tip of the awl, this instrument is going to skive less. So the surgeon will get the microfracture pick in place and then the assistant will be holding this microfracture impact handle and tap it in place. And then when the surgeon's done using that instrument, the first thing they're gonna do is you're just gonna reverse the way that you put it on. So you're gonna peel it back first, peel back, it disengages. And then if they wanna keep this loaded and switch to say their 90 degree pick, because they've, they've got another spot they wanna go to, they're gonna click it on at the top, push it down, you hear it click in, and now they're ready to go with their 90 degree attachment in the same fashion, okay? On top of the 90 degree pick and the 30 degree pick, we also have a 60 degree chondral pick. So you see all of these instruments have a gold plating, uh, and so that, that tin coating is verification that when you've buried that the uh, gold plating in the bone, you've gone deep enough with that microfracture pick. The other instrument that we have for typically the, the anterior portion of the talus is actually a straight chondral pick. So you can see this, this instrument is just completely straight and obviously this instrument won't require a strike plate attachment. So the surgeon can just impact back here and that's, this is gonna be really nice for the anterior curve of the Taylor dome where they're working in this space here. So shifting gears from the chondral picks to the osteotomes, we've got three specialized instruments here. We have a curved osteotome, a straight narrow osteotome, and then a wider straight osteotome. Um, but one thing you'll notice with all of these instruments on top is that they all actually have this little nub feature. And that's really for the surgeon to quickly know they have that tactile feedback to say, okay, this is the working end of the instrument. So regardless of the instrument that they're using, when this instrument is at 12 o'clock with their index finger, that's the way in which th that instrument is designed to function. So if they're holding it in this plane and they're 
they don't feel that nub. They're like, okay, this, this isn't the sharp or working end of the instrument. I want to have it, the nub on my index finger, and that's my indicator of how I should be using this instrument. So you can see we have the small curved osteotome, and then a similar diameter in a straight here, and then the larger osteotome will make quick work of the talus and the distal tibia when a surgeon might be performing an arthroscopic ankle fusion. Okay, so shifting gears to our curettes, the set has a vast array of cup curettes and ring curettes, but let's focus more specifically on these first three curettes um, as part of this set as these are all brand new. So the first curette, as you can see, these are double-ended curettes. And what's nice about these, so we have a double-ended straight, and then we also have a double-ended curve, but the the geometry of the instruments themselves, the heads of these instruments are exactly the same. So I'll just spend some time explaining the straight curette. So these instruments, as you can see, it's, it's shaped like a garden hoe. And so these instruments are gonna be really helpful when a surgeon is, is trying to take a cartilage defect and make a nice rim around to make a, a really solid border around the cartilage. So you can see one of these instruments is um, curved downwards, and I'm going to flip it over, and the other side of it is curved upwards. So the thought process is, is with the down curved instrument, that's going to work in the posterior aspect of a cartilage defect, and the surgeon is going to rake and pull this way, and that's going to make a nice rim, and they can kind of curve around as they need to. And then we're on the, when they're on the anterior portion of the lesion, they're going to use the reversed curve and they're going to do the same thing. They're going to cut into the cartilage and they're going to push away and they can make a nice rim this way. So what it allows surgeons to do with the other complement of curettes and such is that they can make a nice rounded curved defect so they can insert biocartilage or any other biologic material that they might use to fill that defect that they've created. And another simple instrument, but very nice to have, is this small double-ended cup curette. So this is going to be fine-tuning with the smaller defects, but so one side, as you can see, is a three. Okay, so this is our three millimeter curved cup curette, and again, it has this indicator so the surgeon knows, okay, I, my index finger goes here, this is the working portion of the curette, but you've got a three millimeter curve on one side, and then you have a two millimeter straight on the other side. And this is for fine-tuning smaller defects. Surgeons could even use this at the MTP joints or um, any of the joints around the midfoot. And then from, from there, the next round of curettes are, are pretty self-explanatory. You have a large straight cup curette that you can see here. Um, you have a curved version of that as well. And then you have a, a straight with a down curve. So the instrument is straight, but the curette itself is down curved. And that can help in the posterior aspect of the talus as well as this curved instrument. So those are all pretty self-explanatory, uh, but do a really nice job in removing cartilage. So shifting gears to our silver handled ring curettes, we have a large ring curette. And one thing that's nice to know about this instrument specifically is our other ring curettes that are in the system are, are cutting on both sides. But because the head of this ring curette is so large and so thick, only one side of it is cutting. So this will be especially helpful um, if the surgeon is working in a tight joint where they're debriding, say, the Taylor dome, but this curette would still hit the, the uh, distal aspect of the tibia, and it won't cut the cartilage of the tibia as they're using this instrument. We have the three versions of our ring curettes. So we have simply just a straight curette here. This is cutting on both sides. Uh, nice thing that we made change-wise with the original arthroscopy set is that we beefed up the neck of these instruments and we went to a more rigid version of stainless steel. These curettes aren't going to break or dull uh, as quickly as the other instruments. So we've got a straight. The next curette, it has a slight up curve you see it's a straight, but the tip of the curette is slightly curved. And this is cutting on both sides still. And finally, we have the down curved curette. So you can see indicator here, the curette is, is um, curved down, and that's going to work well in the posterior aspect of the talus, for example. Finally, the last group of instruments are our, our gold-handled elevators. And the 
really what I, I expect to be the workhorse of this set is our sharp 90 degree elevator. And I'll pull that out so you can see it. But this is very similar to the original pa paddle elevator that we had in the first generation arthroscopy set. But one thing that you'll notice when you start to use it is th this, the working tip has been made smaller. So it's much easier to introduce in through that arthroscopy portal. And it just makes the instrument much more functional. So this is the sharp version of this. So while I outlined the double-ended curettes were used for making that anterior and uh, posterior rims of the cartilage, this 90 degree awl can be used to make the medial and lateral borders of the curette. Since it's cutting on both sides, the surgeon can simply come in and rake this way, and they can come to the other side and rake on the opposite side to make that nice rim of cartilage. And a similar design to the sharp paddle elevator, this is our blunt paddle elevator. Same thing, we, we shorten the working length of the instrument so it's easier to introduce in your portals. And this is really just for initially when the surgeon is trying to assess how big of a flap lesion they might have off that cartilage, they can go in with this paddle and peel back until they see that stable margin and understand where really that, that stable rim of cartilage is as opposed to what they're gonna need to remove. And finally, we have our Cobb elevator. And we're gonna use this instrument actually in conjunction with our, our uh, biologics delivery cannula that's, that's reusable in this set. So when we're using the Cobb elevator, we really design this to be used after our little bone graft cannula. So this is just a simple cannulated uh, cannula and tamp. So the surgeon can pop in, they can fill this cannula with their, their DBM or other biologics type material, and they're gonna simply tamp this in with their mallet and they'll impact on the back, and that, that will allow them to deliver the biologics into the arthroscopy environment. Once they've done that, then they can go in their fluid will be shut off and they'll use the Cobb elevator basically to fill in that defect um, with that bone graft that they've just introduced. So these three instruments we've really designed to go hand in hand with each other. So the last few things to highlight um, on the right side of this second tier is the syndesmosis probe. So this is not a new instrument. Many of you are aware of this, but this is based on what Dr. Guyton published. He helped us design this probe, but you've got the two millimeter end and the three millimeter end of the probe that you're gonna insert between the tibia and fibula arth arthroscopically to determine uh, the severity of the syndesmotic injury. So that is in, the in, in this instrument set as well. And last but not least is our double-ended probe. Pretty straightforward instrument, but you have a four millimeter probe on one side and a five millimeter probe on the other. And these are graduated with two millimeter increments. So as a surgeon is trying to assess say the size of the cartilage defect, they can go in and say, okay, it's a 14 by an 18 uh, defect and they can, they can annotate that as part of their operative note. Last but not least as part of this set are the new linear instrumentation that we've created. So these, we've reduced the length of these instruments as opposed to the original set. So these are now 10 centimeter working length which is gonna be much more amenable to not only foot and ankle surgery, but really a lot of um, arthroscopy procedures in general. So we've got a, a, you know, a, a vast array of graspers that are ratcheting and non-ratcheting. You see, this is just your standard straight grasper. So this is our alligator grasper, and this is, this is great for grabbing loose bodies and things like that. So, and it is ratcheting, so the surgeon can grab onto that loose body and not worry as they're pulling it out of the joint that they're gonna lose hold of that loose body, for instance. Next is a straight down grasper. Again, this is ratcheting, but this is really designed for that surgeon to get posterior uh, in the Taylor Dome or around any other structure um, that they might need to bend around. If we have surgeons performing arthroscopic repairs, we've created two instruments to help them with suture management. So we have a standard uh, looped grasper that surgeons can use to free up suture. We've also created a fiber tape retriever that functions much like the ring grasper, but of course this is designed specifically to remove um, things like label tape, fiber tape, suture tape from the arthroscopy environment. So both of these instruments are in that set as well. Finally, we have an arthroscopic scissor, and this is pretty straightforward, but this is just a, a shorter length uh, standard arthroscopy scissor. And the last four standard instrumentation are just your various punches 
of different diameters. So this is your small punch. You have a large straight punch. So you can see this is a larger basket punch that's going to take a bigger bite of whatever you're trying to remove. And then we have a curved left and right punch. So pretty self-explanatory, but these are straight. And if a surgeon needs to get, say, posterior medial or posterior lateral and bite something, they can more easily do that. These three instruments, I think, are, are going to be great for the arthroscopists out there. But these are pituitary rongeurs, and we've got them in a straight biter. We've got them in an upcurve biter, as you can see. And then finally, we have a downcurve biter. So these will be great at removing osteophytes, say, from the anterior portion of the talus or in any other situation where the surgeon wants something that's aggressively going to be able to remove bone and hold on to that bone as they're removing it from their portals. So in summary, as you can see, this is a, a very um, exhaustive set. It, it's, it's robust. It really has everything a surgeon needs for an arthroscopy procedure, and really not just for ankle arthroscopy. We've shown this to quite a few sports surgeons, and they, they see that they could utilize this in their knee procedures, in elbow arthroscopy, and even in shoulders. So uh, this is a nice comprehensive set, and we hope it helps our surgeons treat their patients better. Thank you very much.